I'm John Buchanan, and in this video, we're going to explore a couple of Alchemy's sample import options. Alchemy is a sampler, a bit like Logic's main sampler. It's capable of importing sounds and faithfully playing those back like a regular sampler would. But it's also capable of some slightly more esoteric sort of special effect approaches to sampling. And we're going to look at one of those within this video as well. So let's start with regular sample import. What I'm going to do is to set up Alchemy on this instrument track here. It's, it happens to be in my most recently used instruments. If it's not for you, no problem. It's just further down here, a little bit in the list. And what we have a chance to do here is to just load Alchemy. So straight away, what we're greeted with is this uh, interface, which allows us to go and find um, uh, sounds from within the enormous uh, array of sounds that are offered to us when we uh, first install the program. But what we want to do instead is to start completely from scratch, not to use any of the pre-selected sounds, but to start from a completely empty place. And the way that we're going to do that is to come to File, and we're going to uh, initialize the preset. And what that's going to do is to give us just one waveform of the four separate sources that are available. Within Alchemy, we have four sound layers that we can put together at once, A, B, C, and D. And by initializing this patch, we're just left with one, which is a sampled uh, waveform of a sawtooth wave. Fine, except that we want to overload this uh, or overwrite this um, as well. We want to import a sample into this slot instead of using a waveform. So let's come into layer A, which is here. And what we're going to do instead of using a sawtooth wave is to click where it says sawtooth and we're going to import an audio file. Now, the first thing I need to do is to go and find it. I've got an audio file on my desktop, which I want to use, which is this groove. And I'm going to click on it here. And that allows me to audition this sound. You can hear the groove that is going to be imported. But before I go ahead and press the import button here, what I'm actually going to do is just have a look at the analysis modes that are down here at the bottom. Now, crucially, this is where Alchemy starts getting a little bit more interesting than just regular sampling. Well, you can see that there are five separate modes, additive, spectral, and then a combination of those two together, granular sampling, and then the regular sampler. And you can see that underneath these first three options, we have an opportunity to start working with formants, sort of harmonic overtones within the samples. So we're going to come back to those in a little while. What I'm going to do instead for now is to use the regular sampler engine as the import mechanism. And this is as close to logic sampler as we're going to get in terms of the way that we import this audio. So having selected that option, I'm then going to press import. By the way, if you prefer just to drag and drop samples, you can do that here. If you've got a sampler on your desktop or a sample that you want to work with, just drag it and drop it there. And again, decide which analysis mode to use, and then you can press the import button. And what's going to happen is that the sample is going to be imported and should now be playable from my keyboard. OK, so we can see that it's been mapped. And like a regular sampler, what we've obviously got is playback over the key range. And because it's a, um, a sort of looped groove, the higher I play, the faster it will be. And the lower I play, the slower it will be. So far, so straightforward. So what we've got then is a range of tools kind of around this um, interface, which allow us to start thinking about how we want to work with this sampler. So straight away, what I could do if I wanted to would be to reverse it. So the little reverse button is over here on the right hand side, which of course is going to play the loop backwards if I want it to, and that's fine. And then over here on the left hand side, we've got some other controls. We've got volume and pan and our coarse pitch. So I'm in a position to change its uh, transposition if I want to. So we can hear its pitch changing, and I've got a fine-tuned control for that as well. What I can also do is to modify the start position. So in other words, if I wanted to cut into this loop and start from a bit further inside it, I could do that. Let's suppose we come along to this transient instead. I can do that if I want to, so just to create an offset to how long this sample um, or where it starts. And that's particularly useful if you haven't got a sample which has been trimmed straight away and you've got a little bit of silence at the beginning. You can just sort of dial into the waveform there and do that. Also. Up here, what I've got a chance to do, if I want to, is to bring in um, filters. Straight away, I can turn the filter on. I can see that there's a low pass filter option here. Um, what we've got is a lot of choice here within Alchemy. So I've got separate filters which can be applied to just this sound layer. Um, and so I can then begin to apply some uh, tone change to this sound.
if I want to. And also at the moment, you can see that loop mode, which is the little drop down menu here, is off. What I have a chance to do here is to choose a different loop mode if I want to. I'm going to go for continuous looping. Or if I want to, I could try forwards and backwards. OK, so we can begin to see some of the options that are available to us. Now, if we want to go further, let's just turn the loop mode off again for a second. I can press the edit button and this brings up a sample editor, a bit like Logic's own sampler. We have a chance to choose all of the zones and the key ranges up here. Now, we've just got one sample mapped across the entire keyboard for now, and that's where how I want to keep it. But what I could do would be to bring in a range of samples and decide which key range they're going to play back across. And we've got this um, opportunity to sort of go in here a little bit harder and, and actually maybe select start and endpoints for our loop as well. So if I wanted to, what I could do would be to, uh, to adjust these. And what you'll see is that when you grab these end tags, what will happen is that the loop, the, um, the actual region uh, uh, editor here will zoom in. If I just hold on this um, endpoint, you can see that the zoom is changing, allowing me then to go and find really nice fine bits of this audio file just to allow me to make a really crucial choice about what I want this to be. And when I let go of it, it snaps back to its um, original function. So in terms of being able to kind of set start and end points and create edits, if you want to use Alchemy as a regular sampler, remember what we've done so far is to import that sample by dropping into the file menu and hitting uh, sample import. And then what we've done um, is to just begin to familiarize ourselves with some of the more typical standard uh, sort of sampling options that are available to us within that area. So that deals with how to import samples within Alchemy using Alchemy as close to a regular sampler as we might experience. And of course, what we could do would be to go into um, sort of areas B, C and D, load separate samplers into those as well, or separate samples, and begin to layer up sounds that way. You begin to see just how extraordinarily expressive and powerful an instrument it can be when you have those four separate uh, sort of available sample engines all available at once. But what we're going to do now is to set up another instance of Alchemy. And this time, what I'm going to do is to use one of the other sampler import options. Again, what I'm going to do is to come to File, and I'm going to initialize the preset to get rid of the currently selected patch. And again, what I'm going to do is to come into where it says the Sawtooth um, option, and I'm going to come to Import Audio. Now, again, what I'm going to do is to browse to that same loop again, so we can just begin to see how one of these different engines produces a different approach to sample manipulation compared to the regular sampler. So I'm going to come back to the desktop and come and find my groove again. It will audition automatically. But this time, what I'm going to select is the granular option instead. Now, granular synthesis and therefore granular sampling adopt the same kind of approach, which is to take a sound and to break it up into what we call grains. Now, those grains are individual bits of audio, and we can make them as big or as coarse or as small and fine as we like. And what this is going to do is to allow us to take this sound, sort of break it up into chunks, and then begin to sort of slightly rearrange them to produce some really interesting and unusual noises. So I'm going to select the granular option here, and I'm going to press Import. And this time, what we've got is, well, at least initially, exactly the same look to uh, Alchemy um, that we would normally have or that we had when we uh, used the regular sample imports. But if we come to layer A, what we're going to see is that we've got a different set of parameters up here in the top right hand corner, which are going to allow us to just begin to understand a little bit what granular synthesis can be. So to start with, straightforward, we've got this volume control, which is going to control the volume of our sample. But what we've got here is a size control. And what this is going to do is to select the size of each grain, each bit of this audio file. Let's just begin to experiment with some of these parameters and begin to see what happens when we break our sample up into individual grains or bits of sound. So you can see straight away that changing the millisecond time here produces this kind of fluctuating granular sound. That's where the word granular uh, sampling or granular synthesis comes from. We can hear those grains almost individually, and the size is controlling how large each one of those is. Now let's change their density.
Okay, now before I go any further, what I'm going to do is to come over to the loop mode over here. And again, what I'm going to do is to choose forwards and backwards. And what I'm going to do here when I trigger this sound is that we're going to just begin to obviously hear this sound playing forwards and backwards, but in combination with size and density, we're going to start getting some really interesting effects. <laughs> Okay, now I've introduced another parameter here as well, which is the number of taps that we can hear. You can hear this is almost like a sort of delay. We've got a number of different trigger points for the same bits of sample, and so we get this kind of clattery effect. We can also space those out in terms of um, how we hear them and the, uh, and the ways in which they're triggered or the space between them as they're triggered. So we're beginning to get this kind of chaotic, but kind of really interesting sound. But of course, the way that beginning to manipulate samples within the granular module within Alchemy really starts to become interesting is when we start adding modulation. This idea that we might be able to make these changes change over time. So in other words, the parameters might start moving. And the way that we can do that is we can choose firstly the parameter that we want to manipulate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose the size parameter. And the moment I click on it, you can see that over here in modulation, that parameter string, uh, springs to the top of the list. It becomes my immediate target. Fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch on a modulator for that particular parameter. And then from the list or the drop down list available here, what I can then do is to choose something I want to have control it. And I'm going to choose an LFO. I'm going to choose LFO1, which is a sine wave at the moment. And I can choose the shape of it here. You can see straight away that LFO1 springs across to the right hand side. I get a chance to decide how this is going to work and the speed at which it's going to work. I've got its rate control here and I can choose its shape here as well. But all I want to do for now is to get it moving the size of the kind of granular engine over here on the right hand side. So to do that, what I'm going to do is to turn up its depth turn up the amount it's going to control it. You can see that straight away what that does is it puts this orange ring around the size parameter up there in the top right hand corner, showing me the maximum range that this LFO can manipulate the size of those grains. And of course, now this shape, this undulating shape is going to change when I hold down a note. Let's take it out of sync mode and slow it right down. Okay got a really interesting sound now. What I'm also going to do is to take down its pitch overall. Let's take it down a few semitones. Okay, now what I'm also going to do is to set up a second modulation routing. I want to keep going by experimenting with what I can do with this sound once it starts becoming kind of interesting. And, and it's, with Alchemy, I would definitely say that it's worth just diving in and getting your hands dirty and just begin to see what happens when you kind of create these really interesting textural um, sounds out of what started out as a beat loop. What I'm going to do is to choose density this time. Again, I'm going to just click on it. Again, I'm going to, uh, by doing that, it becomes a modulation target. Again, what I'm going to do is to turn this on. And again, I'm going to use an LFO, but this time I'm going to choose a new LFO. So that's going to give me a second uh, low frequency oscillator. So I can see that here. Um, what I can then do is to, again, set the amount or the depth that I want that to have. And this time I'm going to choose a different shape. I can choose from a whole bunch of these within Alchemy. So uh, basic um, waveforms, complicated patterns, 
whatever I like really. I'm going to just dive into here and just choose odd beat one and we'll see the shape that that produces. What I'm going to do is again turn sync off and turn the um, rate right down. And this time this second LFO is now going to be affecting density at the same time that our first LFO is controlling size. So in this video, what we've done is we've looked at two separate ways of working with Alchemy's extraordinary sampler engines. To start with, what we did was to import a sampler, the kind of a sample, the sort of more conventional way, using the main sampler engine and beginning to experiment with some of its parameters. And what we get there is kind of what I would call an honest playback of that sound. We obviously get a chance to control its pitch and its speed across the keyboard, but it behaves like a regular sampler. What we've done in the second instance is to start experimenting with the much more experimental granular engine within Alchemy. And what this does is it breaks samples up into individual grains and we have this slightly unfamiliar perhaps set of uh, parameters available to us to manipulate the size of those grains, how large they are and with loop modes whether they play forwards or backwards and their density and other things as well. And what we've done here is also to increase or introduce, I should say, these modulating parameters, these two separate LFOs where we've picked target parameters. And then what we've done is we've implied or enforced a shape onto those parameters just to begin to get these sounds moving in really unpredictable ways. And I would definitely say one of the things that's most exciting about Alchemy is it really does feel like a machine that offers up chaos and unpredictability. What we constantly find is that you can take even the most basic of samples and find real little moments of magic in it. From a sound design point of view, it's just extraordinary. So I urge you, roll your sleeves up, get your hands dirty and have a go at working with Alchemy.